Tanzania, the Sulu, Africa's biggest game reserve. Home to hunters big and small. A brave bunch of banded mongooses fight to survive amidst an army of killers. Mongooses are bigger, faster, smarter, and braver than their meerkat cousins. But a tough year lies ahead. Our mongoose pack will be tested to the limit, living under constant threat from predators. And the ever-changing African weather. It's a risky business raising a family here. Meet the bandits of Sulu. It's October, the dry season. Slowly but surely, alert to the dangers around them, the 18-strong family known locally as the Magua Bandits are waking. Banded mongooses thrive in many parts of Africa. The Magua Bandits live in Tanzania, close to the northeast boundary of the Salu Game Reserve. Their territory lies along the shore of Lake Tagalala. The Salu is one of the last large wildernesses in Africa. It's one of the few places where elephants can still follow their traditional migration routes. It's home to 4,000 lions and vast herds of buffalo that can trample a mongoose's home. The family is also encircled by one of the largest wild dog populations on the continent. The Magua bandits aren't the only ones to use Lake Tagalala. In the dry season, precious water attracts animals from far and wide. Banded mongooses often dig their homes in old termite mounds. First to rise are vigilant young males, in case there's a predator waiting. Then the leaders appear. The dominant female is six-year-old Ela. She's the boss, a matriarch for our family. Top male is Odu, Ela's mate, chief defender of the pack. Among the adults is Torkor, an expert hunter. He joined the Magua pack from another family, and he's still a bit of an outsider. The carefree juveniles spend their time playing. The 18-strong pack begin each morning with a mutual grooming session. Close contact and scent swapping reaffirm bonds. But when Elar gives the call to move, everyone listens and obeys. It's time to find breakfast. They move in a rolling bunch. That way they appear like one large animal to deter predators. And they are always watchful for danger. Boss Ela leads the way. When she chooses a good place, the family spread out to hunt for food. The bandits search frantically for beetles and other insects. They always set a guard. Sentries are soon relieved. After a bug or two, each adult takes a turn on duty. The meat-eating mongooses love poisonous scorpions, beetles and centipedes.
Hunter Torkor is always on the lookout for extra protein. Banded mongooses relish eggs. He's after the yolk, and he won't give up. The pheasant-like Franklin loses her clutch this time. Eggs provide a pleasant change from crunchy insects. But Torkor's welcome find doesn't go unnoticed. Eggs are up for grabs by anyone. Odu is on sentry duty. And he spies danger. The group's excitement has attracted a tawny eagle, an expert hunter too, of mongooses. They run for their lives. All except brave Torkoal, who stands his ground. Thankfully, the eagle picks easier prey and grabs a bird. Torkoal sounds the all clear. After an attack, the bandits reassure each other with a group huddle. The bandits benefit from elephant paths cutting through the thick undergrowth. Ela leads. Her family follow obediently behind. They take a risk crossing open country. Ela's in a hurry to reach their traditional breeding island on the Rufiji River. Our troop travel in formation. Younger members in the middle Older veterans like Odu and Torkor form the rear guard. The midday heat draws all sorts of animals to the riverbank. Warthogs have been known to kill mongoose pups, but Ela has decided that these ones pose no threat to her clan. Sentries use different calls for ground level or aerial danger. Knowing where an enemy is coming from gives the troop a better chance of escape. Ela knows the area well. The boss threads the pack through a mass of branches, hard for hostile hunters to penetrate. They drink, even though most of their water comes from their food. Top male, Odu, comes across a puff adder basking in the sun. He gives the call for snake to warn the others of danger. Torkor carefully guides the pack forwards to investigate. Dense fur offers some protection, but mongooses rely on speed and agility to avoid the fatal fangs. The snake is already warm and ready to strike. Ela's priority is to keep everyone safe. She orders Torkor and Odu to back off. Her family can't afford to lose its strongest members. Being on the move is dangerous enough. Mongooses often get the better of snakes. They'll look for another opportunity. 
After the morning's dramas, our family finally reached the safety of Mongoose Love Island. Here, generations of Magua bandits have been conceived, perhaps even Ila herself. Uninvolved in courtship, youngsters enjoy some excited playtime. As dominant female, Ila comes into season a few days before the other females. Both sexes play active roles in Mongoose courtship. Now Odu takes the lead, sniffing and biting Ila's neck to show how keen he is. He raises his tail as the final signal. Mating normally lasts about five minutes. Some of the youngsters think Ila and Odo are just having a game. They want to join in. This cheeky teenager's calls let them know he's playing. So despite the unwelcome interruption, the adults don't punish him. Mating is important for the pack's future, but even now they can't drop their guard. One of the two sentries glimpses a silent intruder, an African wildcat. The locals call them little leopards. They're the ancestors of today's domestic cats. He'll risk one of his nine lives to make a catch. Fortunately, not a mongoose this time. Despite his strength and agility, this time, the cat's out of luck. The fertile females mate over the next few days. In eight to nine weeks' time, they will all give birth on the same day. Those that aren't yet mature enough continue with their hectic games. Watching over them is Odu. Pack leaders keep a close eye on adolescent play fights. A future challenger could mean trouble for him. The Mongoose Love Island lies on one of the many tributaries of the Rufiji. Animals are drawn to the quieter side branches because the main river teems with voracious crocodiles. As the dry season progresses, temperatures soar above 40 degrees centigrade, too hot to hunt. In the heat, everyone suffers. The next rains won't be for at least three weeks. Pools are shrinking, forcing animals dangerously close to each other, provoking the odd burst of river rage. Come November, there's a dramatic change. The short rains hit the saloon. Day turns to night as thunderstorms soak the parched landscape. The water is a blessing, but it also brings peril. The sudden torrents can cause flash floods. The brief downpours may only last for four weeks, but the deluges unleash half a meter of rain, and the main rainy season is still three months away.
the residents shelter wherever they can. If our family picked the wrong site, their burrow could easily turn into a watery grave. As the rain beats down, the mongooses reinforce the den walls in preparation for the births. Having babies in the wet season may seem risky, but it means they'll be born when there's plenty of food. Some animals have no choice but to endure a drenching. Eventually, the weather breaks. It's a pleasant relief. The rain threatens to collapse the walls. Between showers, Odu and his helpers rush to carry out emergency repairs. pregnant Ela makes a last tour of inspection before she gives birth. In another week, our mothers-to-be will each have up to six babies. Synchronizing births allows the family to care for them all at once. The newcomers will be born in darkness, underground, with their eyes still shut. The first few weeks are spent in the den until they grow a healthy coat of warm fur and their eyes open. Our family's hard work keeps the den dry and the newborn safe. Now they must wait. After three more weeks of rain, it's time for the new recruits to make their first appearance. As usual, the male guards emerge first, but this time, they're not alone. It's good news for the Magua bandits. 11 new arrivals take their numbers to 29. Although Ela is naturally very protective of her offspring, she still allows the other females to help out. The first public event is a scent marking ceremony. Boss Ela licks, sniffs, and marks the wide-eyed babies before the whole group joins in. It's important for every member to mark the new babies, formally recognizing them as the bandit's newest recruits. Unexpectedly, a late face appears from the den. A twelfth baby, tiny, and with his eyes still shut tight. This is Kisu, but there's something different about him. Kisu's eyes should be open already and he's much smaller than the other babies. He could be a burden to the group. Nevertheless, Ela gives him the seal of approval. Kisu is accepted. Adults often care for the nearest youngster 
young may stick close to one adult, but not necessarily their birth parent. Tough times are ahead. Only half of the pups are expected to survive the first three months. Amidst all the excitement, Torkel, always vigilant, is alert to an opportunity. The master hunter spots a black-shouldered kite. This bird could lead him to his next catch. He goes off on his own. There are new mouths to feed, so the others soon follow him. Mongooses are intelligent. Torkor knows from experience that the kite is likely to be after a rodent. He aims to steal the bird's prey right under its eyes. Torkor's an expert wrestler and is too strong for the rat. He often goes off on solo hunting expeditions. He's still the new guy on the block. He probably left his own family to find new females. Meanwhile, at base camp, the babies are in the care of Odu's son, Banda. And his half-sister, Mungo. Banda seems to see this as an opportunity to relax. But the babysitters must soon forget any thoughts of time off. Mungo is a far more responsible childminder. She's on the case as the kids pour out of the den. While she's left literally holding the babies, Banda catches some rays. Mungo soon has her hands full. Banda finally stirs himself to lend a helping paw. sightless Kisu. Life isn't a barrel of laughs. He can't play like the other youngsters, so he's not part of the in crowd. The others push him around. While chaos reigns at the den, the kite launches another rat attack. This time, more bandits are out to steal the bird's prey, with Odu at their head. Everyone's famished. There's no family pecking order here. It's every mongoose for themselves. Torkor's fine, his belly's already full, but the kite must find another target. Banda and Mungo are having a hard time with their dozen charges. The baby's high-pitched calls are picked up by the local pack of wild dogs. It's an emergency. Banda and Mungo hurriedly call the danger dog alert. Hearing the alarm, the hunters rush back. Wild dogs normally hunt larger prey, but bite-sized mongooses are too good an opportunity to miss. The adults rescue toddlers left, right and center.
everyone makes it to a place of safety. The dogs must find victims elsewhere. It's January. The short rains finished two weeks ago. Now the scorching heat returns. As the saloo dries up, animals face soaring temperatures once again. Fortunately, the Rafiji River still provides water, but finding food becomes much harder. For a newborn, it's a challenge to keep up in this heat. Any group leader like this elephant matriarch faces tough decisions. One of the calves is very weak. A caring mother may have to weigh up the fate of her child against the welfare of the whole group. But the baby totters on, and the herd remains intact for now. In the bandit camp, there's an air of anticipation. Now the youngsters are stronger, it's time for everyone to move to a fresh home. Mongooses usually switch dens every few days. The bandits have eight in their territory. They've spent more time here than normal, so it's no longer safe. Changing dens ensures their scent doesn't build up enough to attract predators. The adults scent mark the babies again, so as not to lose them. The banded mongoose's buddy system means each youngster tends to stick close to a single adult. Ela leads the way with one of the new recruits. She knows the quickest and safest route to the next den. In the confusion, no one notices Kisu isn't with them. Speed is essential, so they carry the babies. All the guards are on high alert. A family on the move with young is extremely vulnerable. Finally, Torkor realizes Kisu is missing. Torkor saves the day. Circling vultures signal a recent death. Lions know this. A pride will seize the chance to reach a carcass. The elephants can already detect the approaching scavengers. Heat and dehydration have overcome the weakest calf. The matriarch tries desperately to revive her baby, but it's too late.
herd do their best to keep the lions at bay, but they need to move on. All too soon, the pride will return to feast on the abandoned corpse. The Magua bandits have their own problems. Ila has led them to the new den, but they've been tracked by a martial eagle. of the babies is too slow. The most likely victim is sightless Kisu. March is the start of the long rains and around a meter will fall. The heavy downpours herald another time of plenty. The Rufiji River swells and food becomes abundant. The elephants can play and bathe. The surviving calves can even have their first swimming lessons. Once more, as rains fall, babies are born. Now there are 33 bandits in camp. And more emergency repairs are needed. The saloon looks very different during the wet season. The land becomes lush. There's more grass to graze, animals spread out, and predators find it harder to pick them off. This morning, the bandits are woken earlier than usual. Guards look out to see what's disturbing them. With new babies to protect, the pack is jittery. It's a noise that's roused the group. Low, rumbling calls from another matriarch's family. It's good news. Elephants are allies of mongooses. Dung attracts beetles the pack love to eat. Elar sounds the move out call. The pack foregoes the morning grooming and spring into action. Amazingly, Kisu is among them. He must have dodged the eagle attack, and the family is still looking after him. Mongooses are among the very few species, together with humans and elephants, that devote time and energy to caring for the sick or weak. Kisu still finds it difficult to keep up with a fast-moving group. On his own, he's easy prey. While the others hunt dung beetles, 
He calls out in desperation. But Kisu's cries only summon a peckish ground hornbill. Fortunately, once again his buddy Toko is on the lookout. He recognizes the danger and rushes to Kisu's rescue. Kisu has a lot to thank brave Torko for. The rest of the family are not so attentive. The plucky youngster does his best to follow the sounds of the group and keep up. He constantly beeps contact calls and follows the other's scent marks. Sightless, he struggles to learn to forage and scent mark. Because his eyes are still not open, poor Kisu can't spot predators. He's totally reliant on the warning calls of others. The long rainy season continues to drench the saloon. Storms will rage until the beginning of June. The inhabitants enjoy a wealth of greenery and food. Whenever the weather allows, the Magua bandits raid the neighborhood. Odu is successful but youngsters must learn to catch prey themselves. Now three and a half months old, Kisu is very underdeveloped, but makes every effort to hunt. His determination is rewarded. His mentor makes sure he doesn't starve. The skillful hunter catches enough food for both of them. Kisu is only alive thanks to this close bond with Torko. A step eagle soars overhead. Odu notices more birds closing in. But they don't pose an immediate threat. They've come for other prey. It's time for the mating flight of the termites. This mass exodus is a feeding bonanza. Millions of male and female termites take to the air, where hungry beaks are waiting. Overwhelming numbers ensure that enough escape to start fresh colonies. There are so many termites to eat, the mighty steppe eagles even time their migration to benefit from the bounty. The easy life of the rainy season continues for the elephants. The youngsters are thriving. Healthy elephant numbers benefit other animals.
the Magua bandits are out on their trails, once again searching for dung. A good pile can yield enough beetles for the whole group. Rain also softens the earth, making digging for grubs easier. Life is still very hard for tiny Kisu. The bigger youngsters often bully him. Torkor's got an eye on him. Then he spots a night adder and gives the warning call for snakes. Kisu sticks safely by his protector's side. Unlike the egg free-for-all, whoever kills a snake keeps the meat. The reward is risky, but worthwhile. Top male Odu heads to the scene. The others distracted, while Odu attempts a killer strike. He needs sharp reflexes to beat a snake. Despite Odu's attempts, it's Torkor, hunter extraordinaire, who snatches the prize. Little Kisu hasn't learned that only the snake killer gets the prize. He tries to grab a bite from his guardian. If it was any other bandit, Torkor would react violently. But even Kisu won't be allowed to get away with theft. The family aren't the only ones with food in their sights. Lions need around six kilos of meat a day. They sometimes kill mongooses, but prefer much larger prey. A herd of buffalo is the perfect target. This lioness means business. But she's quickly spotted. Mungo is babysitting again and sees the panicked herd running by. She and Banda raise the alarm. Other big cats are lurking around too. The foraging party hear the call. The bandits wait for their boss's orders. Ela splits the pack. Females and young follow her and Odu. The rest of the males head towards the lions to act as decoys. With the chance of catching a buffalo gone, the hungry lions focus on the mongooses. 
the females and young head for safety. They're the family's future. Lower ranking males draw the lion's attention away. The mongooses can't simply run down a hole, as the damp ground is soft enough for the lions to dig them out. The magua bandits need all their skills in escape and evasion. The difficulty is doubled for Kisu, who's running blind. In the confusion, Kisu is left way behind by the fast-moving pack, desperately calling for help. Torkor answers, trying to lead him to safety. Once close enough, Torkor runs by Kisu's side, calling constantly to guide him. Cries of panic let everyone know another youngster is also separated. With a leopard nearby, the situation is critical. Leopard and lion hear the distress call. makes a daredevil rescue attempt. And things go horribly wrong. The screaming youngster is snatched. So is Odu. The surviving members head back to the den. Kisu still led by Torko, his steadfast protector. For Ila, Odu's death is a tragic blow. She searches for her mate high and low. without success. All she can do is seek solace with the rest of her family. There is some good news. Kisu's eyes are finally opening. The little fighter will stop being a liability and develop into a key player in the Mongoose team. Torkor, his loyal guardian, is a strong contender to take over as top male. But it's Ila who will choose a new partner to help her lead and defend the group. Her experience has led the bandits through a tough year. They have lost three of the family to predators, but the gang's now 31 strong. The youngsters still have a lot to learn. But with Ila at their head, the future looks bright for the bandits of Sulu.